My name is Adam. Adam Gates. Remember that. I'm warning you. Nobody is going to call me subject number 428A. Theater 5 presents subject number 428A. I warned you. And that goes for all of you. This is a tape recording. When I die, my lawyer will take this tape from my safe deposit box and turn it over to a committee of philosophers who will decide whether to play it for the FBI or to destroy it. I'm making this tape because today I was questioned by a state policeman and I lied to him. My story was accepted, but it was a lie. My testimony went like this. Your name is Max Wilhite? Wilhite? Yes, that is correct. And you were present last night in the technology building in the university campus? Yes, I was. I was indeed. You saw and heard what happened? Yes. Well, let's come right to the point. Who killed Philo Benton? Adam Gates. Mm -hmm. And who killed Adam Gates? Philo Benton. All right, tell me how it happened. Well, there were several of us gathered there in the hall listening to Philo Benton... We were all either scientists or graduate students in science, and he was lecturing to us rather informally. Uh, what was he lecturing about? Oh, nothing really very important. Uh, Philo is an authority on computer systems, among other things. He was very brilliant. Was Adam Gates there? Yes, he was there. But we didn't know it at the time. He was hidden. He wasn't supposed to be there. Why not? Adam Gates was an English instructor. This was for scientists. I can't imagine that he would even have been interested in Philo's lecture. When did you first know he was there? Well, suddenly there was a shout. Shut up, somebody said. It was Adam. Adam Gates. Shut up, he said. He started down the aisle toward Philo. Carrying a gun? Waving it. Coming down the aisle fast, shouting, Shut up, shut up, at Philo. Mm hmm and what happened? Philo took a gun out of his pocket and waved it at Adam. Come on, he said. Come on, if you want. All right, all right, I get the picture. Now, uh, before we get to the killing, tell me, there was a computer in that lecture hall? Yes, there was. Well, I'll tell you frankly, Mr. Wilhite, what's bothering all us investigators is how that computer comes into the picture. You saw what happened to it. Of course. Adam coming at Philo, and Philo standing there waiting, and both of them waving revolvers, and all of a sudden Adam said, put away the gun, and he put his own gun into his pocket. When he did that, Philo put his away. And? And they stood there, looking at each other. Then Adam said to Philo, the thing you love best in this world is that computer, isn't it? And he picked up one chair after another and threw them at the computer. It certainly was smashed to pieces when I saw it. This computer was more delicate than most. And when Adam finished, the computer was a tangled ruin. Mm -hmm. Well, then what? Well, then came the shots. Well, who shot first? Philo. Philo shot Adam, and Adam went down to his knees, hesitated for just one moment, and in that moment he shot Philo. Then both of them went down at the same moment. I see you knew these two men, didn't you? Yes, of course, quite well, both of them. Philo Benton was conducting some kind of experiment, wasn't he? Yes, I was one of his subjects. The experiment went all year. And Adam Gates was one of his subjects, too. Yes, that's right. Well, what was Benton trying to prove with this experiment? I have no idea. Well, you were a subject. Yes. If you want to know what that involved, I can tell you that. There were seven of us. He questioned us often. He woke us up at night and asked questions while we were still half asleep. He sometimes had us sleep with all sorts of wires running to a machine from our bodies. Same. He questioned us about our history, our personal lives, our thoughts. And you don't know why he did this? No, sir, I do not. Okay. Can you figure any connection between the experiments and the murders? No, sir. 
I, uh... You what? Well, nothing. I have a personal opinion, but that hasn't anything to do with the facts. Well, you're not on the witness stand, you know. Why don't you tell me your opinion? Well, sometime about the middle of the school year, Philo started going out with Adam Gates's young lady. Uh, her name was... Now, we, we, we have her name and her story. You figure that Adam caused all this fuss over a girl? Well, it's happened before, and I keep remembering what he said before he attacked the computer. The thing you love best in this world is this computer. It was as if Philo had attacked what Adam loved best. The girl? Yes. And Adam was getting back at Philo by attacking the computer. Well, that's a new kind of a triangle, but we live and learn. Mr. Willite said, uh, I never knew it to happen before, except when the testimony was framed. But are you aware that every witness gave the exact same story? Well, in this case, you're dealing with trained scientific observers, officer. I may as well tell you that the DA said that if your story was the same as that of your other scientific friends, the case is closed. The case is closed? <laughs> That's right. Well, sleep well, Mr. Willard. Some of what I told the police is true, but the important parts are not true. That is why I'm recording this statement. I was in Philo Benton's office yesterday morning when Adam Gates came in to see him. Are oh, you busy, Philo? Oh, hello, Max. Oh, hello, Adam. Could I talk to you, Philo? Certainly. Come in and sit down, Adam. Thank you. <clears throat> well, what I want to know is what Max and I have been doing all this past year. I want to know what the experiment was all about. Do you have that much curiosity too, Max? Well, Philo, I am human. The fact is, Adam came to me Yes, I, I went to Max a couple of months ago and asked him what the experiment was all about. I was quite surprised to find out that he didn't know. And why? Well, Max is a scientist. I could see why you wouldn't bother to tell a member of the English department, but uh, a fellow scientist... I'm afraid you don't understand scientific experimentation at all, Adam. I wanted an objective report from Max, without his knowledge, of course. Yeah, that is precisely what I told you, Adam. I know. I... It might surprise you, Philo, to learn that even a dim-witted English instructor could understand that. We're getting sarcastic now, aren't we? Yes, we are, Philo, because I've resented your assumption of superiority throughout the past year. What you really resented is that I went out with your girl. Oh, don't be fantastic. She didn't mean anything to me. I told you that. Oh, I know that you told me, but what you really felt is quite another thing, though, isn't uh, it? Gentlemen, gentlemen, this isn't pleasant. Why don't you stop being so personal? It's rather embarrassing, you know. All right. I warn you, Adam, there's nothing about your personality or Max's or the personality of any of the others in this experiment that is a secret to me. Oh, Bosh. To you, Bosh. But since you've asked for it, let me tell you in cold detail what I've accomplished. I've taken enormous amounts of data from each of you, and every bit of this data has been fed into my computer. You've seen my computer, hmm? It's the most remarkable instrument ever devised by any man in the history of the world. And you devised it, I suppose. Be sarcastic if it pleases you, but I did indeed devise it. And it has absorbed all the data I have been amassing all this year until now. And I know everything about all of you. I prove that every individual action of every individual on Earth is completely predictable. That is astonishing. Bunkum. I knew you'd say that, Adam. Believe it or not, I knew from your background just what you'd say. The exact word. Not bunk as some people would say, but bunkum. What you're trying to tell me is that I don't really have free will. If you want to put it in that 19th century fashion, yes. You never did have. No one ever has had. But now we can prove it. Oh, you're so wrong. I knew you'd say that, too. Shakespeare had free will. I predicted to myself that you'd bring up Shakespeare. Caesar had and Lincoln had. And Caesar and Lincoln. You know, Max would have said Galileo. And I have. I have free will. That's all it comes down to, isn't it now? That you want to have free will. You, personally. You, the little maggot called Adam Gates. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. Uh. 
Well, I'm coming now to the point where I'll have to tell what really happened when both Philo and Adam were killed. I find that I hate to speak the words, especially since I'm committing them to tape. But about my meeting with Adam Gates, it's important to know if you are going to understand what happened later, when those two guns went off and two men were killed. I met Adam as I was coming out of the college coffee shop that afternoon, after that scene with Philo. Hello, Max. Oh, Adam, hello. Glad I ran into you. Oh, what did you think of the talk in Philo's office this morning? Well, quite frankly, I wouldn't know what to think about it. I'd have to wait until I heard his proof. You'd have to wait? Don't you have any emotion? Now, now, take it easy, Adam. But well, do you want it to be true? Well, no, no. Our entire personality is reduced to, to something you can put in a computer. You know, when I thought of afterwards... What? A way I could confound him. You know, I'm from Cincinnati. I went to undergraduate school in Boston. I went to graduate school in New York. And here I am now with Chicago, the nearest city to us. And Philo knows all that. Yes. Well, I'd just like to ask him one thing. I'd like to ask him what baseball team he thinks I root for. Baseball team? No, 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 I mean it. <laughs> I mean it. Even though I've lived in all those other cities, strangely enough, the only ball team I care about is the Washington Senators. Now, if Philo's computer can guess that, I'd like to know about it. Well, so would I. You know, I hate him. Yes, I gathered as much. Tell me something. That meeting that all you scientific chaps are having tonight, has that, uh, has that got anything to do with Philo's experiment? Uh, Adam, I don't know whether I'm supposed all to divulge All I want to know is what the meeting is about. Well, Philo is going to explain to us what his experiment has proved. Hmm. I was part of that experiment. Why didn't he ask me? Well, Adam, since you're not a scientist, maybe he thought you wouldn't uh, understand. Hmm. All the same... I'll be there. It appeared that he wasn't there. But now I know that he was hiding. Philo was very cocksure talking to us, but very interesting. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. Now, gentlemen, now, if you've uh, understood me up to this point, you realize that the computer I built is the most remarkable one yet devised. And you've seen, too, the completeness and the importance of the data I've been feeding into the computer all year long. Now, I've stated that the computer can tell me literally everything about any individual. Let us demonstrate that. Let's take subject number 428A. This is the only individual tested in this research project who has no scientific background. <coughs> At this point... Shut up! The... Shut up! Stay in your seats, gentlemen. This interruption is not entirely Shut unexpected. Up. You were going to read to them about me, weren't you? Subject number 428A. A fine protection, that number is. There isn't a person here who doesn't know that I'm the only subject in your experiment who didn't have a scientific background? Well, well, well. Welcome to our meeting, Adam. Philo, he's got a gun. Quiet, gentlemen. I'm quite aware that he has a gun. Shut up. You think you know everything about me, don't you? Correct. Well, you must know I hate onions. I know that. Well, I ate stewed onions for lunch. And do you know I'm a Democrat? I do. Well, I signed some Republican nomination papers today. You think you know everything about me. You can't know everything about anyone because every man is a mystery. If that weren't the case, I I, 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 I wouldn't, wouldn't want, want to live. To live. <laughs> yes, yes. I knew you'd say that, too. There is one man in this crowd here who knows what baseball team I root for. I never happened to tell you. What team is it? Adam, when you interrupted me, I was reading my findings to these gentlemen. Perhaps you'd care to let me go on with just the next few sentences. All right, all right. And then tell me what baseball team I root for. All right. Now then, where is my place? Ah, here we are. This is the only individual tested in this research project who has no scientific background. At this point in my reading of this paper, this individual will interrupt me. He will have been hiding in the room until this moment. He will have a weapon, probably a revolver. He will attempt to confound me because on the morning of this meeting, he will have asked me what the research project has been all about, and when I will have told him, 
he will be seriously upset, almost deranged. He will have spent his whole day trying to prove that he has free will by doing things he ordinarily would not do. For instance, he will eat onions, which he detests. Let me see that paper. Certainly, I've been reading from it, not making this all up, you know. You can't know everything about me. You can't accept it, but I do know. What baseball team do I root for? I'll read from the paper again. He will make a great point of challenging me to name the baseball team that he likes best. And he will become violent when he realizes that the computer has known all along that it is the Washington Senate. No! No! I told no. you he'd grow violent, I'll gentlemen. Get you, I'll throttle you, I'll, I'll kill you. I'll <laughs> gentlemen! Oh. Gentlemen! Oh. Get, get me. Oh. Gentlemen! Oh. Gentlemen, please, please, please. I knew, of course, that he would do this, too. I'm sorry that the gun went off accidentally and killed him. But it's no great matter now. Now then, let's uh, not run to the police right away. I have pretty well demonstrated what I wanted to demonstrate here. Man has no free will. His every action can be predicted. Within our own time, life will become orderly through this experiment. Are there any questions? Oh, I, I can't think what to say anymore. Philo, I have a question. Yes, Max. Did you expect we'd like your findings any better than Adam did? As a scientist, I knew you'd accept it. Philo, do you know everything about me as you did about Adam? <laughs> Certainly, my dear Max. Did you think I'd bring a weapon? Why, of course not. Philo, I'm not sure, but I hope I've just proved you're wrong. You see, I do have a gun. What? what is I gun? don't like your findings any better than Adam did. Max, put down that gun. No. I don't want your experiment to go any further. Stop him, somebody. What, what is it? I'm afraid. Philo. I don't see them moving. I don't think they want your program to go any further either. No, Max, no, 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 you, you can't. It's impossible. <laughs> well, gentlemen, that is the end of Philo. I think you won't want to turn me in, and I think we can cook up a story for the police if we bend our minds to it. But don't you think we ought first to destroy this monstrous machine? That's it. That's what really happened. I'm not sure I'm going to let myself live long. But when I do die, and you listen to this tape, remember, I struck a blow for your freedom. Theater 5 has presented subject number 428A, written by Robert Sanadella and directed by Harry Nelson. In the cast, Donald Buca, Jack Manning, Ivor Francis, and Court Benson. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York.
This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.